everyone, welcome along to our little, uh, I was going to say Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> it's Friday, uh, to our Friday afternoon little uh, live that we're doing here. I'm trying while this um, new lockdown regime is on in the UK um, to just bring as many lives and videos etc to you just to keep you amused during that, um, God my hands look gigantic. <laughs> during this time because it's uh, it, it can be difficult for those of us like me who um, are in the extremely vulnerable uh, category. So today it looks and feels a bit different here in my studio. I've got a new cutting board. Thank you very much Hilda for providing me with that. I will do my level best not to get it as mucky as the last one but I said that about the last one when it was new as well. But I love it so much. It goes with my chair. I'm all coordinated. And those of you who are on the Facebook group, the Miss uh, Paint-A-Lot's Junk Journal group, will know that I have spent a great deal of time this week tidying up. And so all around me is all my stuff and it's all nicely uh, put away in drawers and stuff. And I haven't got a clue where anything is, really. However, I'm sure I'll find it eventually. Today's little foray is into the world of watercolour. And we did one a couple of weeks ago where we used the Derwent Ink Tense pencils and the Faber-Castell watercolour uh, coloured pencils, which is, it's a lovely way to paint actually. And it's kind of, you, you don't feel as stressed, I think. New, new people don't feel as stressed because they're holding a pencil. It's something that's normal to them. Um, but today we're actually going to move on to watercolour paints and I'm just going to be using these two very simple sets that by Derwent as well. Um, they are really ink tense, but they're in watercolour um, pans. So this is what they look like and they're called Ink Tense Paint Pan Travel Set. And there's two palettes, palette one, which is this, palette two, which is that one. Um, they're fairly similar, just I've got my things around the wrong way, that's it. Um, you can see I've used mine a lot. They're really handy just to grab and go. Um, you know, I have got some, a really lovely set of expensive watercolours, but unless I'm actually going to be painting a botanical illustration or whatever, I don't think I need to be almost wasting my good quality ones when these do such a good job. And for junk journals and stuff, these are absolutely adequate. Um, so I wouldn't advocate going and spending any more money really than these two sets. It's pretty much all you need. Um, and then if you get to like it and love it and you want to go on further, then by all means, buy what you want to buy, of course. Um, the paper, watercolour paper, it's a huge, huge topic. And watercolourists tend to find a paper that they like and that's it, they never change from it. But getting to that stage where you find the paper that you really like, oh my goodness, it's an expensive affair because watercolour paper is not cheap. Uh, I use a bit of everything. I haven't found any that, you know, I think that's it. But for today's um, live, we're going to be using this Derwent watercolour paper you know, I'm a bit of a Derwent girl. They are local to us, so that kind of sways my feeling about them. Uh, but they do produce some good stuff. So this is the Derwent, as it says here, Derwent watercolour paper. And it's, uh, these are A3 pieces. You can get it in different sizes. It's 12 sheets and it's 300 GSM, which is thick, 140 pounds. So it's, it's fairly thick stuff but you can get watercolour paper that's much thicker than this because if you're adding water to paper it buckles so the thicker it is the better it is really so all I've done uh, today is just chop a sheet of that into four four pieces so I've, I should have about four of this size A5 sort of size yeah okay right so that I would suggest that this is a good starters watercolour paper. I did go to Hobbycraft and I bought this 
um, some time ago now. Hobbycraft art watercolour postcards. And I thought they'd be quite nice for adding to the junk journal. But I didn't like them. And I've just reminded myself again this morning when I used one that I don't like them. The surface is very keen to pill up. Um, and so I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't recommend any of the Hobbycraft art watercolour paper. I don't like it. Sorry? It's just says, is that cold pressed? The... Well, it doesn't say it's cold pressed. Um, but yeah, I think it is cold pressed. This is a, another... With watercolour paper, you can get it cotton, you can get it rag, you can get it paper. They're all different. They all leave a different surface to paint on. And you can also get hot pressed and cold pressed. Um, you're quite right to bring that up, Shaz, but I'm going to just bench that one today and we might get onto it um, in subsequent weeks when we're talking more about what what the paper can do for you. So that's the paper. Um, and this morning I just I printed out this just from Google. It's just a pretty little image. And I tried on the uh, Hobbycraft art paper just to, the little postcards that I had, just to see what, if I could do it. <laughs> I know that was a bit late to find out, you know, that I couldn't, but I just had a little sort of, playtime with myself and I wanted it's very white this paper and I wanted just to darken around the edges um, to see if it would fit into an Edith book junk journal you know um, and I think it probably would it's not the world's best painting but um, it's pretty enough and that just came from there and I would encourage you to do that to go to Google uh, look for well in my case watercolor flowers because it's just I only ever do flowers really um, print them out and just have a go you know there's no issue with copyright as far as I'm concerned because I'm never going to get anything that is so close to this that you can't tell the difference <laughs> so uh, I don't have a copyright issue with that so that's that the next thing that I did was print off another image which is this one which is really pretty I really like this image um, it's quite delicate and it's an image with watercolour, as we progress, you learn there are lots and lots of different techniques. There's no point bombarding you with those at the moment. There's a technique called wet and wet, which is ostensibly what makes watercolour work. But we don't need to do that on this. And I had a little go, once again, just to make sure I wasn't going to totally embarrass myself. Uh, and that's what I did uh, from that. And this is what we're going to have a go at today. So... I think the thing to do is lose my head, off with my head, uh, and because we really need to kind of get in close so you can see what I'm what I'm doing. So does anyone have any questions so far? Sorry, Shaz, about benching yours. Is everybody okay? Yes, we'll do a roll call, shall we? Let's do a roll call, and then we know who's who. Tatty's gone to make a coffee. Oh, that's so, Tanya. So to give a chance to. It's Tanya to Tatty. Back. Right, we have Maureen. Hi, Maureen. Thank you for sending the two Christmas, uh, two LGBs out. You saved the day. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Um, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hilda. Hello, darling. Helen. Hello, Helen. Kerry. Hi, Kerry. Shaz. Hi, Shaz. Kathleen. 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 Dial, I guess. <laughs> I've not even seen Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen, and welcome. Uh, Fran on the edge. Hello, Fran. I'm a bit on the edge myself. Happy yeah. treasure. I think Fran is the girl who commented on uh, when I said I was going to do this on one of the other groups. And she said she'd been doing watercolours this morning. She enclosed, uh, attached a little image of some toadstools and they were absolutely darling. They were gorgeous. Sorry to interrupt. Tati. Tati Tanya. Hello. Flo. <laughs> Hi, Flo. Jania. Hi, Jania. Uh, Corrine. Hi, Corrine. Haven't seen you for a while. Nice to see you. And Fran on the edge says, Hi, Fiona. <laughs> In capitals. <laughs> Hi, Fran. <laughs> 
right. Well, what we're in t- uh, what I'm anticipating doing today is nothing like your beautiful talk stools. We'll we'll build up to that. We're just going to get the hang of holding a brush, mixing colours a little bit. You know, just gently easing ourselves in. And I'm hoping if it works, I'd like to try it on just a sheet of paper uh, from a book because sometimes I'd love to paint. So I've taken it from this book, The Hidden Landscape by Richard Forte, because I thought that was kind of relatively in keeping and it's the only one I had that had this sort of paper. So um, I'm going to try that afterwards. Did you want that book? (laughs) I've chopped it up. Oh, sorry, I I can stick it back in. (laughs) I'm sure I can get another copy somewhere. Oops. That's one of my (laughs) geology books. Yeah, no. Cheeky man. I'll paint on it and stick it back in. That's fair enough. I'll just add to it. (laughs) Uh. Mm. (laughs) Oops. (laughs) Right, so this is uh, my inspiration for the day. Uh, That was the first attempt. Princess, sorry, she used to put it in capitals if she's speaking to the artist. Oh, really? She she does lowercase if she's speaking to the... Oh, I did not know. Speaking to the artist, I don't know if I'd go that far. But thanks for informing me about that. I didn't know. Now, this is, as you know, the Derwent paper, and it does have a right and a wrong side. So we're just we turning you off, aren't we? Turn my head off. Bye. Oh, there I was and, gone. And can I just try a new feature and people can let me know if they like it or not? Yeah, do it. Do it, do it. Just put in the chat on the bottom left, uh, so it might help people that aren't taking part in the chat. Let me know if you like it or not, because I can always take it off. It doesn't look any different on mine. It might, it might catch up. Should be there now. Oh yes, it's there now. So I can make that full page then, so I can get rid of that chat. So I've got this, oh, that's tiny. Oh no, I can see it now. Who's on the naughty step today, says Hilda. (laughs) <laughs> me <laughs> right I'm going to put my reading glasses on or painting glasses they don't get used to anything else and uh, let's just have a quick little minute about brushes uh, I've got some lovely sable brushes they're very 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 nice they're very expensive um, and I wouldn't recommend that you go out and buy those straight off brush sizes well, they're a bit of a funny thing, really. Each manufacturer has their own uh, sizes. So I don't know why I keep looking up to the camera. You're not there anymore. Um, but I'm using Aquafine by De La Roni. They're a, not an expensive brand. Don't get the Sable ones. Um, just get the ordinary Aquafine. And I've got a number two, a number four, a three stroke naught, which is very fine. Um, and I've got a number, oh, that's a different one. Um, and I've also got this one with very long hairs, and that's called a fine liner. Um, so really, I would say that you need, for everyday use, uh, yeah, probably a two and a four will get you through most things. A finer brush as well is nice. But anyway... So you can use water pens if you like when you first start off. But to be honest, they're more difficult to control. You, you, it's better if you have better brushes. You'll need two water pots, one for dirty, one for clean. You'll need a bit of kitchen towel. I'll use this that I've stamped on with holly. <laughs> uh, and a pencil. Don't use a really hard pencil. Don't use a really soft pencil. Um, an H or something like that is good. Um, and don't have it that it's got a really sharp point because it'll indent the paper and you won't be able to rub it out. So I'm just going to give myself some little guidelines here. And they are literally going to be guidelines. I don't think you'll be able to see them. They're just really light. And it's just to get me coming into this center here where everything's sort of happening all these yellows etc so let's make a start with the blue that's what we used to do we used to have the reference picture up under the comments didn't we yeah yeah 
never mind, we're learning. We're learning as we go along. So this is the, the colours in this palette and I want quite a bright blue. So I'm going to uh, wet my large brush. I'll bring that across out it. I can't see that com those comments anymore. And this is ultramarine. Is that? That's not on there. People say they prefer you in the corner. Right. But when you're painting, all you see is the top of your head. Yeah, no, it's true. Well, she was pointing out it's not an either or situation. Normally you'd be there and the comments. Yeah. It's just when you're painting, all you see is the top of your head. Yeah, it's true. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing the French ultramarine with the navy blue. These these are exclusive to the Derwent, um, the Derwent set. There is no colour really called navy blue. There is a an ultra, French ultramarine, but... Um, I'm mixing these two together. Now, the other thing that you don't get with watercolour is light blue and dark blue. You make that yourself, depending on how much water you add to it. And you do need to add water to it. So I'm taking a little bit of the, the French Ultramarine. Before I started, I spritzed my paints with uh, water. It just softens them and gets them into the mood for mixing. So do that, then make yourself a cup of coffee, come back and spritz them again. So I'm mixing French Ultramarine with this navy blue that's in here. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of water because I want quite a pale colour. So that's quite a lot of water in there now. So I'm just going to clean that brush off. And unlike acrylic brushes, you can clean your brushes out just with water um, and set them to the side. Acrylics are a different story. You really have to clean them properly. So I'm going to make a start with this uh, number two brush. It's quite fine. Uh, and we'll just see where we get to. And I want to make a start on the blue. Uh, that might be a little light for my purposes. No, that's fine. On the blue flowers. Now, I'm look, I'm just literally dotting. That's all I'm doing. You can do this too. You, I mean, you so can. Look, it's just dots. And you're following around as if there was a stem there. Okay, so this is the stem that you're imagining. This is the stem you're imagining. And then there's another one here. And they sort of go down. Just look at your picture for inspiration. I keep telling you this, but it's true. The answers are all in, in your inspiration picture. And there's another one down here. If you do that and you've got too much paint on, dry your brush off and go over it. Just dab it down and it'll pick the excess up. It's like a magic eraser. So there we are. There's another one up here. So this, it's not difficult, is it, guys? You can do this. All I'm doing is dots, dashes even. Um, and I think there's another one up there. I mean, if you go off the beaten track and you put one where there isn't one, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, really so much does not matter. Right, I think that's probably about all I've got. And they're vaguely in the right place. I've put one here that might not even exist. It doesn't... It, don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. Don't sweat the small stuff. That's hip, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm just going to take another little bit of dark blue paint, the navy paint, add it to my mix, which, uh, which watercolour painters call a wash. Uh, add it to that mix then. I'm just going to come back in with this darker one got a hair on my brush it's not helpful and just add it throughout on one side so I'm only going to add it to this side of my flower stalks and it will just give the impression that the light's coming from this side and that's an important thing to remember when you when you paint it's probably You'll hear people sometimes say, oh, I'm an artist that breaks all the rules. Really? Do you really understand the rules? One of the rules is that 
always like coming from one place. Um, and you must abide by that rule. So just imagine there's a lamp on your, on your desk and it's looking down. Where's the light going to be? Where's the dark going to be? Right. So the next thing we need for that is some purple. You all right, Mr. Ev? Yep. So red and blue make purple. Uh, this is quite a dark red and it's almost purple anyway. So let's add that to our wash, see what we get. Ooh, that's a very rich colour. If it weren't quiet. Oh my goodness, no. That really is purple. So I'm just going to add little bits of this throughout here. Watercolour always dries uh, lighter. So, you know, don't panic when you put it on and think, oh no, I've ruined it. You haven't. So just throw out the blue. So there's no techniques going on here, no watercolour techniques that are going to make you afraid. You can you can do this, all we're doing is dib dib dab. So just adding depth and interest to, to our blue spikes here by adding little bits of uh, purple onto it. Coming outside that line, maybe, that we've created. Mostly on the dark side, but not exclusively, because there's shadows within the spike. So, there we are. I mean, that's as simple as that. We can go back in later on if we don't like it, or if it's dried too light or whatever. But actually, I, I quite like that. It's, I'm just making that longer just because I wanted to. You can do that too. Now then, the other thing that's sort of purpley, whilst we've got purple on the go, are these, I think they're clover flowers. And there's four of them. It was just asking what type of flowers the first ones are. Does that look like anything to you, Hilda? <laughs> um... I just don't know. I, it, I don't know. They're kind of just like a handful of wildflowers, aren't they, really? I don't know, Hilda. Um, they, they probably are something, but I'm, I'm not sure what. They look like grey pisons, Shaz. Yeah, you're quite right, they do. So I'm going to water this purple down considerably, therefore make it lighter. And I think it's a bit too purple for our requirements, so I'm just going to add a little bit of red into that mix. So I'm making this mix work for its money. It started off blue, then it was vibrant purple, and now I just want it to be slightly redder purple. I'm going to have to add some more water to that because there's. I'm just going to take some of that out and put it in another tray. As I've got so much pigment in that tip forever to water it down. So there we are, I've got a nice light purpley colour. Let me just sort of work out where these are going to be. There's going to be one sort of here, um, one kind of there. And I'm, I'm not sure if this is exactly where they are on this picture, but it's, it's where I'm going to put them and they'll all end up all right. <coughs> So these are just kind of fluffy things like this. That's about as detailed as they are. And I think, Hilda, these are clover, but um, I couldn't tell you exactly. I think they're clover. But they're untidy. The petals are untidy. So just draw them like that from the centre, just little little dashes like that. And I'm bending them over, as you can see. So from the centre and just bend it like that. Minimal pressure on your brush. 
like so. And we'll come in later on with some darker colour right at the centre. But I think they're fine like that as they are. In fact, I'll come in now with some darker colour, seeing as we're on there. So it's just splotch it. Don't don't try and be exact because it won't work with this style of painting. But once again, we've got dark in one one side of it, light in the other. So make sure that you put more on the dark side. which is this side. They are just splotches. There's nothing technical about that. Right, okay. I'm just, all I'm going to do is just add a couple of these darker leaf, uh, petals. That's fine. That's enough. Just to make it, give it some 3D-ness. Okay, everybody can do that. I know you can. I know you can. Right, so the remaining flowers are these these ones here, and I'm not even sure. I can't see the, the um, what you call it, the screen to see if these show up because I've got my paint and glasses on. I can't see that far. Um, these are very, very, very uh, faded out. And I kind of like that, although in this one, mine aren't so faded out. So it's up to you. Make your own decision uh, how faded out you want them to be. But the colour that I would choose is this one. And it's, uh, Derwent have called it fuchsia. And look at the pigment in that. I mean, that is so much pigment there. So get your largest brush that you've got and get quite a lot of water and water this down. So there we are, we've got the fuchsia, but it's really watered down. So let's think where these are going to go. Um, there's one there, one there, a larger one there. You don't have to draw these in. Uh, I just don't want to look a complete Charlie, so I'm going to draw them in to help myself. Um, you, of course, will have the benefit of not doing this in front of everybody, <laughs> um, which is good, I think. And I think there's a little one there. Right. So let's do those. Now, once again, these are just unti untidy dashes. It's all, it's all they are. So don't get hung up about it, because if you do, it will start to look too tidy. We're not really trying to copy any flowers. We're just... Painting flowers. We're adding pretty colours to paper. And that's about the extent of it. Impressionistic. Yeah. Loose. <laughs> Loose is this style. I don't know where all these hairs are coming from. I'm going to blame the cat. So, yeah, be loose, you know, hold your brush loosely and don't don't fret if things don't go exactly right. You can see what I'm doing, can't you? I'm just literally going around here. And I'm sort of not putting this bottom part in because I want them to look like they're going that way. Not all flowers will be facing you front, front and centre is what I'm saying. I hope that some of you will have a go at this. Do you think you will? A friend was wondering if you preferred painting on the loose style or a more precise one. Oh, more precise, Fran. Absolutely more precise. I absolutely love doing botanical studies. That's my kind of my thing, really. Um, and for that, as you know, uh, it's it's pretty precise. I'm, I'm not good at, at loose work, really. 
not that I'm saying I'm good at botanical either, but um, yeah, I, I, everybody that knows me from the group and whatever knows that I precision is my thing. Right, okay, so I'm quite happy with that, but I'd like a little bit of darker in it as well, just to, yeah, do the same thing. Add a little bit of 3D-ness. So I'm going to take a little bit more pigment, add it to the wash we've created, which will give me a darker colour because there's more pigment in the same concentration of water. And just, just add some little bits. more to this side maybe more in the center okay so we've yeah they've got a little bit of 3Dness going on. Now I'm just going to dry that because you can't add another layer while that's wet because it'll just all meld together. But the good thing is watercolour doesn't take long to dry. So I'm just, just bear with me a sec. I'll just dry off what we've done. Well, I have got a degree in textile art. But textile art is a kind of different thing. Well, I say it's different. It, yeah, I've got a degree in art. <laughs> there we are. Is that Kerry Burt? Kerry Rhodes. Oh, Kerry. Uh, Fran says, uh, I wish I could do more lo loose work, but I can't. I had an ad and can easily overwork it. Yeah, I am with you 100%. Uh, doing, you know, see people that have done loose work and they're like, oh, that's fabulous. And, I, you know, you try and do it and you end up, you just concentrate more and more and it ends up really tight. Right, so let's move on to the yellow um, blossoms. So there's one about here. There's a big one here, there's a big one kind of under it, there's one here, there's a little one there, a little one there, a little one here, largish one there, and a little one there. Okay. Now don't press on too hard with your, with your pencil, um, because once you've painted over it, you won't be able to get it undone. Uh, erased I should say so I'm just going to spritz these again so they're ready for use whenever I want them and for this really uh, it's yellow but I don't have a yellow that is exactly that yellow I've got this one which is sherbet lemon and it's definitely not that acidic uh, lemony colour it's, it's a yellow and the choices I have on this palette are sun yellow or mango as you progress further into your art career you'll realize those are not actual uh, pigment colors um, pigments have a very definite name like prussian blue or thalo green or whatever these are ink tense pencils that have been made into pan so they don't have an art color name um, we just go with what it is. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of this, uh, what they call sun yellow, um, and a tiny little bit of this mango. Let's see what we get. Yeah, I think that's about right. So a bit of water into that. Now I want these quite vibrant. They are standing, you know, I want them to stand out. So a little bit more pigment maybe in there. Oh, I've gone too orange, add a bit more yellow. A little bit more yellow right now I want to add some water and I'm going to use my bigger brush and my clean pot of water because I don't want to mucky it with all the 
purple that I had going on. So I'm just adding clean water to this just to give us a nice concentration for our wash. I think that's all right. Okay, so let's start at the top and then we won't be smudging as we go down. So the first one at the top. Now, in order to get a good point on your brush, and this, this is worth telling you at this stage, put your, your brush in into your pigment, roll it around so as all the hairs are coated in pigment, and then start pulling it off, but still twisting your brush. So you'll get a nice point at the end, and your brush will be loaded with pigment. So there's one up here. And again, these are, they are not detailed flowers <laughs> by any stretch. Uh, there's one up here somewhere that I haven't put in. I can't decide, I think it's there actually. Um, and there's one, oh well I've drawn one in there, I don't think it's actually there in reality, but you know, it isn't real, real life anyway, is it? Uh, and this one, which is kind of more open, like that. So do that twisting trick with your brush every time you want to go back and pick up more pigment. You will understand, Fran, <laughs> and anybody else who watercolours, that this is for beginners. Re you know, really is a beginner's first time you pick your brush up kind of thing. Right, so that's all our outside flowers done. So let's do these ones. And it's kind of the same thing. Put your brush down and pull in towards the centre where you've drawn your circle. So if you put your brush down just on the point and then flatten it, you'll get a thin line right at the edge of your petal. And this is, could you share your reference picture later on the boot? I, yeah, definitely I will. So that's fine, it looks wild and, and woolly, but that's kind of what it's, I'm just gonna add a touch more orange to this mix because these two flowers are really close together and I want a tiny little bit of differentiation between them. So I'm adding just a bit more of that mango to the mix. Just so hopefully they'll... So if you put your brush down and then pull away as you get towards the, the edge, the end of your stroke, put it down, pull away, it will go to a point so you'll have a point on the end right so we'll come back to those shortly and uh, put some darker colors in them so this it's darker in the center so put your brush down and pull away i know there's a lot of things i'm telling you today but I I couldn't see a way around it. You need to know these things. So this is quite a large one here as well. So you don't, you can be careless. Be careless, in fact, it's, you know, I mean, I'm encouraging you. Uh, and there's just a little one here, which is literally that. Right, so now we need to darken this down to give them a center. So what I'm going to add is a little bit of this color, which don't call burnt yellow ochre. So let's just add a little bit of that and it'll make it more orangey, but a more sort of brownie orange. Let's just add some water to that diluted a bit right so same trick with your brush rolling 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 pick it off 
and just at the bottom of here just drop a couple of bits of that in right in the center of there going down this way and in the center here just want to see if I can't actually rub that out I put my pencil on a bit a bit harder than I normally would and now it's annoying me going to have to live with it pretty much or not. That's because I didn't leave it to dry before I did it so it's a little bit more I'm just remember which is your dark side which is your light side I'm very pale since I uh, used the eraser, I quite like that. Okay, so there we are. That's, all, that's okay, I'm quite happy with that. Um, perhaps not the one really in the centre. I'll just go back to that bit of yellow that I hadn't mixed with the ochre. Now I'm going to go back to the bit that is mixed with the ochre. There we are, right, okay. I think I've almost erased this one. I might just have to bring him back to life a little bit. Right, so that's pretty much it now. What we need now is um, greenery. Yeah, greenery. So I have a choice with my greens, lots of choice actually. On this one, I've got turquoise. No, I've got what is that? Ionian green and light olive. Hmm, both of those sound nice. Uh, and on this one, I've got teal green, racing green, which is a bluey green, and kiwi, which looks like a lime green to me. So we need lots of lots of different greens here because each plant's got its own variety of greens. Actually, this just reminded me, it's got some grasses at the back that are um, in this sort of yellow ochre colour. I'll just take a little bit of that. I'm going to use that neat as just as that colour and then come in with some darker brown in a sec. So I'm just going to use that and they are literally just sort of standing up at the back and they are very loose. like that and here same thing and that, that's really all you've got to do with these there's no more to be done with them Right, so I'm just going to get a little bit of this darker brown, mix it into that wash. So I've got a mid brown, you might say. A little bit more water, that's a bit concentrated. And just put some little lines in here and there. Nothing too dramatic really at all. You 
you want your brush wet, but you don't want it sopping. It's hard to, you'll, you'll know, you'll know when you get it right. Right, okay, so that's some grasses in there and there aren't any others. Those are the only ones. So we're down to the greens again, guys. So I'll just rinse that brush out. Get my larger brush. And I'm going to mix up a fairly sort of mid-green. It's the best way I can describe it. And I think it might be this sort of colour that I'm aiming for. Ooh, that's a bit bluey green. I don't like that. Let's move into that one. That's a better green. So if it's a bit dark, this is fine at the moment for what I want, um, but we'll we'll change its tone in a minute. Let's add a little bit more water to that. Back in with my fine little brush and pick some of that up. And I'm just going to make an attempt at this bit down here. So just kind of in between the clovers, it's just a kind of, I don't know what it is. Might be a bud, might be a clover bud. I've no idea. It's a kind of splotchy thing that looks a bit like that. And then underneath that, there are some leaves. Now, um, yeah, grass. So I'm going to push, drop my the point of my brush onto the paper and as I travel I'm just going to flatten the brush down and then pick it up so it's down on the point of the paper flatten it down and pick it up like so now you will need to practice this we are not born knowing how to do this so the point of the brush down flatten it out and pick it up again and there you've got some grass it's not any more difficult than that um, there's some more of that down here I'm just gonna add a little bit more pigment it's just a bit washed out that one um, so there's some down here so the point of your brush touching the paper then flatten it out and pick it up Is everyone all right? Uh, yes, she says you need to adopt her so she can come and play lots. Oh, I'd love that, Shaz. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if it was ever going to happen, she could be first in the queue. <laughs> yeah, a nice chat with Shaz yesterday. Um, so there are some of these broader uh, petaled grasses around the place. I'm, I just want it slightly more concentrated than that um yeah there's some coming up here and kind of here um where else are they there's one here So really, it's kind of the greenery that makes this, that holds it all together. And, you know, you can't really copy this off the uh, the page. It's just too much of it. So just sort of put it where you feel is right. Now, there's some big, tall ones at the back that are literally dabs. A sort of ear of, I don't know, something, something that grows. So there's one at the top and then the rest come down. Don't be too perfect. Uh, there's one here. And there's one at the bottom here. Okay, so that, that's probably sufficient with that. So now I'm going to add some yellow to that mix. 
some of the sun yellow, I think they called it, which will give me a, a different hue to my green. Make it a bit brighter. And there's some leaves down here that are really quite bright. But it's the same story. And if that's not wide enough, just go in again and make it wider. So don't overcomplicate this for yourselves, guys. There's no need to. It'll, it'll look nice as it is. I don't think there's too much else up at the top, really. Um, but we have got grasses down here. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just, once again, just putting my brush down. And as I pull it in the direction I want to, I'm putting force on it that flattens it out. And then I'm lifting the force off again. May the force be with you. So this one... I just want to go over there just a little bit. I can't help myself. I just want to darken that edge down there. You don't have to do that instantly. I just literally cannot help myself. Um, probably on that one too. It just darkens one side and gives the whole thing a bit more sense. Right, okay, so now it's time to pretty much put the stems in. Once we've put the stems in, there might be areas, this area here, that needs some more leaves, etc. But we've got to put the stems in first, because at the moment they're floating in thin air. <laughs> I keep looking at the camera and you're not there. <laughs> it's ever so strange. I can put you there if you want to say hello. Yeah, but let, let me say hello. <laughs> hello, I miss you, everybody. <laughs> okay let's get back to this back in your box back in my box right what i'm going to use for this is this um paintbrush as you can see it's got a really really long hairs on it but it will work well if you have learnt how to twist your your paintbrush and pick up paint because all of this all of these hairs will carry paint so you can get a line that's really, really long without having to go back and pick up paint and break your line. Because when you break your line, it doesn't look right. So that's, I think there's two different schools. Some people call them fine liners, some call them rigging, riggers. And I think they're called riggers because people used to put the lines in the old ships, you know, that had the rigging in it. So, uh, oh, just give me a minute. Excuse me. <coughs> The other thing is uh, fine liners because people use them for writing names, etc., etc. You've got the gist. Right, I'm quite happy with that colour to do some of the stalks, perhaps not all. Um, so I'm just going to wet my brush, get rid of most of the water off it, and then pick up this colour. So it's the same thing. You soak your hairs in the pigment, twist, 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 and twist again. As you pull the brush off your palette, keep twisting, 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 like that. And you'll get a really nice fine end on it. And all of this is full of paint. So we can, let me just move that out of the way. So we can put our stalks in. And you get a nice fine line like that, hopefully. It does take practice. Don't think, oh, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that again. Um, it does take practice. And you'll find that you're more proficient one way than another. Um, obviously, I'm left-handed. And I find it easier that way. Um, so I turn my paper. And there's nothing wrong with turning your paper, guys. Nothing at all. If it's going to help you turn it. 
So I've put your stalks in. That probably needs a little bit of green under there, actually. These buds need a bit of green at the bottom. Which I'll just put in with my fine liner. And notice I haven't loaded my brush up again. Doesn't need it. It's still going strong. It's got loads of pigment left in there. These lines are beautifully thin. So we're going to end up with quite a lot of uh, stalks, stems, etc. at the bottom here. And that's fine because that's what you would expect if you've got a bunch of flowers. And I still haven't had to charge my brush up again. It's still got pigment in it. Um, that one there hasn't got a stem. And that one there is still in midair. So are these. <laughs> So we've connected everything now. Um, we've pretty much connected them with the same size stem, which you know isn't realistic. D different flowers have different thicknesses of stems, but that gives us a good starting point, I think. Um, the, the overriding thing I'm not happy with is the center of these flowers, which is too much not there. Um, on the actual reference picture, they do have centers and on the picture I did this morning I put yellow centers in just to marry up with the yellow that was already there but I'm going to go back to the purple I'll just wash my rigger brush out. Uh, Fran would like to know have you tried the water brushes with the water reserve? Yeah like the Caran d'Ache yes yes I have I still like my brushes though <laughs> my brush brushes so I'm going to go back to purple um, let's put this out of the way and just this is the color that we made them with so I'm just gonna um, add some water to that just to rejuvenate its life add a bit more of that pigment now that's what we used for the flowers but I'm gonna add some blue to that and just purple it up Wow, that is a concentrated blue. A little bit more of that. Okay, that's fine. So that's a darker hue than that because I've mixed it with some dark blue. Now, actually, I think I'll use this bigger brush. This is a size four. Um, and I'm just going to drop in some centers. Probably needs even darker than that. So it's easy to do, nothing difficult. The whole thing is doable, guys. You just need to think to yourself, you can do it. And I know it's a confidence thing. And most of it, you'll find frustrating to start with. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Finished. I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to that, to that mix. Let's see what that does for me. Oops, that's a lot of colour. Too much water on my brush. There's a little bit of pigment there. It's bright. This is a bright one. So you can go to and fro like this. What you can't do is make something lighter. Once it's on once it's there, it's it's kind of done. Right, okay. I think now what I'm going to do is just concentrate a little bit on the stems, making them perhaps a little bit thicker in places. And then, how are we doing for time anyway? What time is it? Yeah, An hour. hour. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, your stems are quite light on that one. They're not showing up particularly. They're not showing up, okay. Well, let's... Uh, 
get this out again then I'll make the you shouldn't really be mixing paint with your rigger <laughs> it's it's not particularly good for it I'm going to add some more pigment to that then so hopefully you'll be able to see Uh, see, see my stems. Don't leave your paint brushes in your pot. The watercolour brushes, they're soft and they'll bend and splay. So just rinse them out and leave them. So I'm going to pick up some of this and I'll try and make them a bit thicker for you so you can actually see, see what's going on. Let's move that out of the way. So it's just with the point of your rigger, like that. Just a little bit, like so. Just put a little bit of green in at that one. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So these lines might be slightly thicker than ones I would ordinarily do. Um, but there's no point if you can't see it. So this one I'm just going to put some green there and one stroke like that, one stroke like that and you can practice that, that's something that you can practice. So let's bring all these stems in, make them thicker, everything gets thicker as it gets nearer the ground. Especially me. <laughs> I was talking about flowers but yeah. So as that one joins onto there, this will automatically get thicker because it has to carry all the nutrients for that other one. So as it comes down here, it will be thicker. And it doesn't matter on a loose thing like this. And it really doesn't matter. We're not being botanically correct by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a good habit to get into. Uh, where else have we got? Let's put some more green in there. Uh, that's a very bad line there. It, do, it is helpful if you turn your paper. You, you will find it helps. Um, what else can't we see? Uh, there's a line, a stem at the middle of this grass. And, and you'll see exactly how far I can go on loading my brush up, this very, very fine brush, just once. You can get a lot out of it if you load it properly. And I've shown you how to load it properly, so you're all right. Okay, there we go. I do think these need just a little bit of sprucing up. They've just kind of died in the background. Um, and then we'll put some more grass on it and then we're done. So I'll just rinse out my rigger. Go back to my two. You're right. What have you lost? What's not on it? On that grass there, I think there's a little stem. I can't oh, no, the there's stem. no stem. <laughs> it's floating and thinner. There we are. It's grounded now. Thank you. You're welcome. Can't be having things hanging around. So that that's purple, but it's come out a very sort of smoky quartz type colour, really. Um, so I'm going to go back to these ones i've got this pur slightly purpley color here i'm just going to add a little bit of blue to that a little bit more right i'm, I'm quite happy with that it's quite highly pigment oh didn't mean to do that stick my fingers in the green and it, you'll find this you know there's a lot of oh that's I need to add some more pigment or oh, I need to add some more water that's watercolor don't get frustrated it's just the way it is so it's just I just want a little bit more color on these just a bit 
dowdy looking, really. We don't want dowdy. So it's very little care being given here, just dots and dashes. Yeah, that's better, I think. I like that better, yeah. So let's just finish off with some leaves around the place. Um, I'm going to use my bigger brush, my size four round. Um, if you've got a six, you'd probably get away with that as well. Mine's in the drawer, so I'll just use this uh, four. And I'm going back into this green, but this time I'm going to zest it up with a bit of this. Well, they call it kiwi. It looks like lime to me, but I'm going for it with the with that bright colour. It's brightening this picture up a little bit. That's fine. Bit of water to slacken that pigment off. Pick up your paint as I've shown you how to, rolling your brush to a point. Um, and let's just let's just see where we need this. Probably quite focally. So let's put one there. And one just behind it there. And here, they don't have to make sense, these leaves, uh, these, yeah, leaves. Because it'd just be a, a, a crush of leaves in your hand anyway. Uh, maybe one at the top. There are no shortcuts. I, th I thought I would just shortcut that, do it the other way, but it didn't work. I think we're getting kind of there now. With yours, you can go on and on and on if you want to. I do think we reach a stage where we've kind of you know, we've reached the end. Yeah, I'm happy to say that's complete. Quite like it. It's okay. And I think for people who want to do um, watercolour for inclusion in, and well, I'll say botanical journals because they'd go in mine because I'm, you know, I'm quite loose with the the descriptor but certainly in Edith I think you'd get away with with either of those in, e in Edith journal actually and just before you go I just want to see if I can having defaced Mr F's book I just want to see if you can get away with doing this on there I'm not going to do the whole thing I just want to know if it's possible I've never done it before so we'll just uh, give it a try so I'll start with some green leaves and see how we go from there Look at that bright pink flowers. How nice. Wondering if you need more pigment. Looks quite pale, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking that you might need actually more more pigment for painting on pages. Let's give that a go. I think this is probably doable, actually. I just wanted to see if it was just going to wrinkle the paper so much it would just look horrid. But 
think we might be I think we might get away with that I'm going to go back to my number two brush because it obviously doesn't carry as much pigment and therefore doesn't carry as much water Have a go at whatever this flower was that we were doing. add a little bit of this into there it's quite bright but I like it okay and let's do oh let's do a pink flower Oh well I've got purple, oh well, we'll do pink. See how pink stands up to it, or this fuchsia colour. It does seem fairly pigmented so I don't think I'm going to have to add too much water to it. Which I think would be the decider on a, on a page like this. I'm just winging this guys I'm not copying off anything I just want to see what happens down there and one down here I'll go into that purple that we made for the other the other one just put a little bit of that in there there we are that's okay let's get some yellow well I'll leave that to dry actually I'll put some stems in uh, I'll just get my fine liner and this very green 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 grass of home that ages me somewhat it was on the go in the 60s <laughs> uh, I'll just casually put some stems in I think this actually would work. Karina says, this has been wonderful. She loves watercolour and you've made it easier to understand. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, and Fran says, this has been very relaxing to watch. <laughs> I'm really amazed, Fran, because I thought you'd be sitting there going, no. Because <laughs> there's so many other things along the line that I will teach you. But all I want you to do today is just get your brush out get your paints out and just see what they do that's all just see what they do and see what you can do with them but don't do it on a library book <laughs> this is not a library book unless it of course is mr f's personal library in which case yes it is <laughs> Right, so there we are. It's just a little something and nothing picture. Um, but you get the gist. I've done that on on a book page. I'll dry it off just to make sure it doesn't want to buckle. Oh, 
bag's quite pretty actually, doesn't it? I might put some more leaves in there. Jenny uh, says so she's going shopping for paint today, yellow Ellen paper. Ooh, yikes! <laughs> Where do you live, Jenny? Or do you live in America? I feel that you do, but you might New not. York, I think. Oh, New York? I think so. Uh -huh. I could be wrong. I'm just going to add a couple of more le uh, grass sort of leaves down here because it looks a bit barren. So she must have a go at loose and it's lovely Fiona. Oh, thank you. Uh, and Jenny's in Florida. In Florida. Oh, well, you won't be thinking about putting your fire on today. Will you? <laughs> right. There you go, guys. It's, you know, they're not masterpieces. I'm well aware of that. I never profess to. I'm going to put them back on camera. Yeah. OK. Yeah, oh, I'll put my glasses on so I can actually see. But I hope I've given you some instruction, a little bit of instruction that will make you feel that you can actually pick, mix paint, pick it up and just do some dobs like that. Wink Blink says, oh no, I'm late. So pretty. Oh, you're late, Wink Blink. Great name though. Um, so, you know, you can do this on a journal card or whatever, or in uh, front of a little notebook you're including in your uh, journal. Practice makes perfect. Uh, loose style is not something I practice a lot. Um, and then I've also done this little one on a book page. Just to, It was the nearest paper I could get to Edith, and I didn't want to use Edith in case I screwed up, frankly. So I've used Mr. F's best book. Um, but you see, it's it's worked, I think. They stand out quite nice. Do you like that, Mr. F? I, I like it a lot. You like it a lot? Oh, good. So there you are. There's two things for you to go away and practice. If you need any further assistance, immediate assistance, if you join my Facebook book group, which is called Miss Paint a Lot's Junk Journal Group, message me or leave a comment in the group. I will get back to you. I don't want to. I don't want you to just be thinking I can't do it. I can't do it. If you've got a specific problem, let me know and I will endeavour to do my best to get you through that. But I can guarantee that most of it is just practice, just familiarity, holding the brush and just getting some confidence together. So guys, it has been great as ever. Tomorrow you will have the delightful Mr F who will be finishing off our holiday a little golden book by uh, binding it with a hidden spine, <laughs> just for added excitement. Um, and then on Sunday, I'm back again with the Holly Jolly jo Journal and we'll progress with that. So it's been great and I'll hear you tomorrow if I don't see you and I'll see you on Sunday. So thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate you spending time with me today. Bye. Bye everyone, take care.